Another Electron app gets a snap. LibreOffice is counted to six. Someone reminds us that Swap is good. And Odroid releases the N1. All that more coming up, and yeah, it's another great day for Linux, everyone, so let's go. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we're going to sit back, um, take that midweek break, relax, and uh, hey, Pedro, let's talk about some of the cool things we found going on um, since last week. Sound like a plan? You want to do that? Yeah. 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 Maybe. A little bit. Uh, before we get started, we do like to see what's going on. I have my fingers crossed because they upgraded my bandwidth, not free. Um, I, I had to borrow... It's strange, Pedro. I found out that there's companies that loan you firstborns because I didn't have a firstborn to give them. And um, <laughs> they haven't come out here with a new hardware for it that they said, but they've reprovisioned it. And we're doing the show right now. That should lead to new things. What are you up to, man? What's going on new in your life? Well, uh, I'm basically gearing up for what's going to be a, uh, a month of, uh, let's see... We have Valentine's Day on the fourteenth. Then we have Nori's birthday. It's uh, it's 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 basically I'm out of ideas for gifts. So if anyone has any ideas, let me know. Uh, more than uh, open to suggestions. <laughs> oh goody, um, uh, girlfriend! I will I will text you after the show. Um. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so uh, before, we, b- right before the show, we decided to uh, take the Pepsi challenge uh, with a little bit of skeep, and it apparently just got easier oh, to yeah. install, right? Um, yeah, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> if you have the uh, snap subsystem all set up, ready to go, it is just a pseudo snap install Skype, and uh, it it works. "Quote unquote," uh, like Ben said, we did try it before the show. It mm-hmm. uh, I guess it technically made sound. It, we technically were able to connect with it. Now, mind you, I tried using the snap version. Right um, here's the mm-hmm. thing: uh, the snap version has to run in classic mode, so all the security stuff just poof, out the door. There's no point, and it <laughs> could not. The snap version did not detect any of my audio devices or video devices. And when you think about how many audio and video devices are tied into this box, that's laughably bad. Um, then I went just to test it because I didn't have Skype on this box. I put the Debian, just the regular package on, and it just worked out of the box. Then we tried it before the show, and it was it's still a hot electron wrap busted piece of mess, Pedro. Oh, yes. And that's the one thing, there's a bit of a pattern I started to notice. We get a lot of snaps for Electron apps. You know, those apps that basically run off of a self-contained Chromium or, yeah, it's usually Chromium uh, framework. And you don't really need a universal package to go along with it. They just need a tar.gz mm-hmm. and you extract it and you run it. So why all the sudden uh need for snaps for electron apps i i don't know i don't know man uh snaps a thing i mean if we have to go all the way back to be perfectly fair i had to reinstall snap because i don't like the (laughs) virtual devices that it creates it gets really annoying and Mm -hmm. um i've since uninstalled it maybe maybe it'll get sorted but something that did go a little bit right, is the Telegram, which I don't personally use, but I've heard good things. Yeah, Telegram, it's, uh, it looks a lot like an Electron app. It could very well work as an Electron app, but it's not. It's actually built in C++ and a couple of other things. And the big thing here is that they've basically open sourced their, uh, like bottom library and now you can spin your own custom versions of Telegram. So let's say you want to uh, have your own have your own Telegram that fits a certain branding to fool certain people into believing that it's another completely different program, WhatsApp, um, or that uh, you have a bit of a niche and you'd like Electron, uh, ele- not Electron, uh, Telegram, to fit into that particular niche, like say you're running a um, 
podcast that focuses on Linux, video games, and you'd like uh, to, I don't know, maybe even spawn multiple versions of that particular Telegram app uh, with its own independent, um, I don't know, audio syncs, video uh, streams, everything. So you could have two separate streams or more, who knows, um, have all of that running off of a single application. This this is a really, really good idea. And it's open source. Uh, it's got a decent enough API that people should be able to just figure it out by looking at it. Uh, heck, if someone makes one of these which allows for those multiple streams, maybe, maybe we'll even give it a shot. That might be a good idea, man. TDLib is definitely the right way, I think, to go about this business because, hey, if you don't like the mm -hmm. official app, Try one of these, something you don't normally get to say, fully featured um, third party, the ones that have been created by the community. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. And, you know, anything's better than Electron flavored lock in. So, yeah, 100% good on them. I, yeah, I'm kind of with you that we're using wire right now for audio and video. I, more, more options, mm -hmm. more better, 100% on that. Um, more better, yeah. uh, kind of like Mate. Mate 1.2, zero. That's right, Wimpy. I know you're listening. Uh, after 11 months of development, Mate Desktop, the team, they're pleased as punch. Uh, you know, in my day, we said proud as punch. I'm just saying it's got a bunch of new features. It is a desktop environment. It's kind of neat. Uh, one of the things that caught my eye was the dynamic detection of high DPI displays. As somebody with a UHD monitor, mm -hmm. uh, Marco now supports DRA3. And X present. That's good. If they're available. No word on what Polo is up to. The Mate terminal now supports background images because let's face it, Pedro, that was a real showstopper with previous <laughs> versions of Mate. And I'm going to say this, man. I'm going to say this. You know, I, I'm going to wait for a PPA. It's available for download. If you want to build it right now from the sauce, go mm -hmm. for it. You want to roll out a PPA? I'll take the Pepsi challenge and see if it can handle all five screens of furry, man. <laughs> Yeah, previously it didn't do so well with all the multiple X sessions that um, Ven's running, but yeah, I'm totally going to wait for the unofficial uh, 1604 PPA to be updated because there's a guy that's been like compiling GTK3 and everything else for 1604 uh, so that you can install the newer versions of Mate, the newer versions of uh, GNOME, all of that, and the DRI3 thing is very significant, especially if you're on the open source drivers, because that brings a significant performance boost for people on Radeon SI and the Intel i915 or i965s. So that, that is really good. I'm very, very happy to see that. Good on you, Martin. Good on you. Yeah, definitely good times. I mean, I, I gotta be honest, Mate was, I, I use XFC because it reminds me of a CD E plus I've also been like three monitors at minimum for me to be productive and happy. And yeah. <laughs> XFC out of the box, you can basically just throw what however many displays you can and XFC's like what? Got it, done. <laughs> Very few things do that. But mate mate was a close second. So I'm interested in giving that a try. Um we talked about LibreOffice and what, what military organization last week was it? It wasn't. It was the uh, Italian. Italian. Uh, the Italian Armed Forces. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, they are moving to uh, uh, LibreOffice and they're trying to actually push for more open source in the Italian governmental organizations. But this isn't exactly about that. This is about LibreOffice itself. It's reached version 6.0. Uh, they say power, simplicity, security, and interoperability from desktop to cloud. Yes, they have improved the cloud system for LibreOffice. Uh, the desktop version also saw some nice little um, improvements, let's say. Uh, the There's a uh, little setting that is disabled by default, but uh, you can enable it if you, for some reason, are one of those two people who actually likes Microsoft 
office's ribbon, uh, which they call the notebook bar. So yeah, if you like the ribbon style menus, you can have that now. Honestly, I prefer just to have the two toolbars and make the icons as small as possible so I can have everything on screen at any point. And yeah, it's more LibreOffice is good LibreOffice, honestly. You, yeah. These guys are just rocking. I think they're definitely doing a good job on that, man. The open PGP keys can be used for ODF documents now. Uh, mm -hmm. Upcoming release for the LibreOffice viewer for Android, you'll be able to create new documents, offer tab-based toolbar and formatting options, a bunch of cool stuff. You can use your camera for um, locally stored or in the cloud and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I'm digging that. Um, they do kind of warn. They're like, hey, man, uh, LibreOffice 6, it's here, it's the thing, but you might not want to deploy it on your enterprise systems just right now. We got some packages just for that. Mm. So, yeah, I'm 100% with you. They are doing good, but um, it won't die. SC Media, all this business in our show notes. Mm. Attackers have exploited another critical, <sighs> as opposed to non-critical Adobe Flash Player, zero-day bug, no patch yet, and all I got to say to you is I didn't even read this stupid monkey article because in 2018 you use Flash, you deserve what you get, period, 100%. And what's that? Oh, there's that one site that you simply must use, uh, but because they only support Flash? Well, you know what? Too bad, you know, because you need to ask yourself this. Well, why are you supporting a site that just clearly doesn't care about your security, man? Mm -hmm. uh, but my anime waifu I'm sure Mir is devastated because of all that anime he won't be able to watch on Crunchyroll that's one of the last websites that still holds on to Flash for some reason but yeah your anime waifu is going to give you more than an STD if you keep on using Flash just saying this bit of news actually comes from um, a Korean uh, security firm They've been uh, conducting research on North Korea, and in doing so, they found a very significant exploit. It's a zero day, so you're basically boned uh, if you're still running Flash. And like the article mentions, there is no uh, patch just yet. So stay away from Crunchyroll for the time being. <laughs> Indeed, Maddie does point out that uh, the patch did land today. Coming up next is a defense of swap common misconceptions because it bears repeating. And this is another um, good write up about what's going on with it. Because, you know, Pedro, some people, they, they're uh, swap adverse. And uh, it's kind of weird because I, some people just simply refuse to accept that swap's a good idea. Heck, you know what? Most people don't even understand what swap is. And you know, if you mm -hmm. use swap in the spirit intended, it is good it's great i mean it doesn't prevent disk io from becoming a problem under like memory contention or anything the kernel wants swap it wants to love it and you're like, well you need to explain mm -hmm. no you need to go to this web zone where it tells you but uh what, what's what's your favorite misconception uh, that uh, it's going to cause your uh everything to explode it's going to eat your ssd up or I mean, I've heard it all. Yeah, well, that's not a misconception. It is. You're actively writing stuff that uh, usually would go onto RAM if your RAM is a little too busy, or if there's if even if like the buffer is full, it will start swapping because hey, the buffer is full, so the RAM isn't catching up. And yeah, it is. It will if you have your swap partition or your swap file in your uh, SSD. It is going to wear it a little faster and yes there's also a chance that it will slow down your system if you run out of ram or the buffers are full and the system needs to resort to your local storage to use as ram yeah that's inevitable but i'd much rather have a system which slows down when it's being hammered than one which zooms along until it crashes that's no one wants that right well the guy brings up some really good points about the operating system, especially the Linux kernel, is looking for swap. I mean, that it mm -hmm. expects it to be there. And it's 2018, man. If you get an SSD, if I cannot burn through SSDs, you're not going to burn through it with a swap partition. Go ahead. Make a two-gig yeah. swap partition. It won't hurt anything. Um, so... 
What do we got? Two more things. One thing we want to touch on is high five. You want to give me a high five, Pedro? <laughs> uh, over the internet, I don't think that works. Okay, the first but Linux no, Ready is... Risk V chip. It's the world fastest, world's fastest, world. A lot of worlds in this. Only Linux capable SOC 4.1. Oh, it's Risk V. Uh, what do we got? Uh, mm-hmm. Two megs L2 cache, 64 bit DDR EEC, gigabit Ethernet. Uh, ooh, woof! It's built on a 28 nanometer processor, but I was. I, it still kind of had my interest, Pedro, until I got down here. The development board's going to run 9.99. So not only is it wicked expensive, it's also evil when it does handstands. <laughs> oh yeah, and you can see just how small that thing is. It's not as small as a Raspberry Pi, but you can see there's like a micro SD adapter on the bottom right there. There's a couple of USB ports on the top right. So yeah, it is almost Raspberry Pi size, uh, but it's running Risk Five. And if we've learned anything from the Falcon motherboard uh, slash chipset from a while back, is that Risk Five chipsets and architectures they're not cheap. Because I'm guessing it has something to do with the fact that they're not exactly being mass produced right now. Although a development board like this with um, Risk Five at the heart does bring some advantages, namely the people who like to tinker, the people who like to, I don't know, create new things. Maybe they can find a use case for which Risk Five is really, really awesome, and it beats ARM, and it beats x86, 64, and it beats everything else. I don't see it, but maybe someone else will. Hmm. Quite possibly. Uh, it's it's out of my price range. Uh, thousand mm-hmm. dollars? No, a thousand bucks. That's a, that, that's a bit. If I'm even thinking about a thousand dollars, I. I've... I, I want more street cred. I'm looking at that Power 8 development board and bring that up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want straight up moon technology for that kind of money. So uh, not in Soviet Russia because they decided to call this thing LKRG, which to me is like, really, guys? Really? Because it genuinely sounds like an organization that might come disappear you in the middle of the night. What is it? You never heard of it? Oh, it's yes. a loadable kernel module that perform runtime integrity checking of the Linux kernel. Its purpose is not to pass butter. Nay, it is to detect exploitation attempts for known and unknown security vulnerabilities against the Linux kernel and attempts to kind of block them. So uh, I'm guessing it doesn't automatically flag PSP or IME. You can probably expect a pro version for a few wet stinky caches. And it, yes, you guessed it. You might have guessed it. It does come with a performance penalty to run this as a module, and you're looking at about 6.5% hit across the board. Which is not as bad as some of the expectations between uh, Meltdown and Spectre, but we are living in a world uh, with Spectre and Meltdown running rampant in the wild with no surefire patches in sight. There have been some mitigation patches, but that's about all you get. So the current version of LKRG is bypassable by design, quote unquote, as they put it. Um, but I'm not entirely sure because I was reading through this and it's like, this sounds a lot like secure boot. Do we really need a Linux version of Secure Boot? I don't I don't think so. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm wrong. On the desktop, maybe not. Enterprise, something like this. Listen, there, there are people out there that just called you an idiot to your face um, over the internet, Probably. which is dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> um, simply because it, it's peace of mind, I guess. But mm-hmm. I, I couldn't see... Because we're already looking at the uh, Spectre patches and performance hits that we're going to be taking with that. Adding another 6.5 mm-hmm. on top of that, When oh, what are you really worried about? Your your recipes? Um, yeah, pro- <laughs> pro- probably not worth it, man. I, I don't know if I'm going to be bothering. I, yeah, I'm going to bother with it, but probably not going to be something I'm running day to day, man. Just going to be honest. Just no. Just going to be honest. And they do say that they are going to, with the uh, more recent versions, they will be improving on that performance hit so it will be coming down hopefully and hopefully this will actually be useful because right now anyone can just sidestep the uh the checks for the exploits that it does so not really useful yet but it is very very early days for this project so that's something to keep in mind and to wrap us up 
it's just a teeny tiny mention that uh, open source has turned 20, the philosophy that is. Um, you know, the wrong one, the wrong philosophy, if you ask Richard Salman and his flaming katanas of justice. Yeah, it's the open source philosophy. Basically, it all it says is the source is free. You can compile it. You can change it. You can do whatever you want to it, so long as you contribute back, depending on the license, obviously. And it, you can't really make a profit out of it. Uh, that's the big sticking point. Uh, unless, of course, you are also uh, giving back part of that profit to the open source project that you're actively um, using or whatever the license happens to state uh there are some licenses out there that will allow you to just do your own changes do your own thing and not provide anything back you just can't claim that you came up with that idea well, you got your but, bsd i mean there's a listen man the, the holy wars I, i'm not even touching that but the bsd licensing and stuff like that then you have your yeah. mit license apache license you get then you have the arguments between is it foss is it floss and Hey man, it's been around, and I know open source has been around a lot longer than 20 years, but this is somebody trying to um, package it to get it out and be like, hey, come check this open mm -hmm. source thing in. And yeah, I mean, how many billions has Red Hat made off open source? Quite a few supports the thing. Well, yeah, quite a few. <laughs> mm. Speaking yeah, of support. No, open source is go ahead, just go. a part. <laughs> no, it's just a part of the big Linux ecosystem, what we talk about here. On Linux Weekly Little Wednesdays, but hey, it's 20 years old now, so kudos. Mm. All right, back to that support thing. If you want to help us out, man, linuxgamecast.com forward slash uh, support. You can do it and you can keep us loud, live, mm. independent. We got the Amazon links, affiliates, uh, we got a wish zone with some crazy stuff. Humble, thanks everyone for shopping through that double with the wish list, but uh, bitcoins, da da da. What we really want to thank is our beautiful party patrons. Uh, we got new people this week, Ooh. Pedro, so we can oh, read yes. out their names and thank them personally. Would you Would you please uh, serenade us with your choppy, uh, robotic-sounding voice? <laughs> well, I do apologize. Apparently my network isn't doing all that well, but I will not stop if it means that Sharon L., there's a new Patreon. She's course, already been yeah. hanging around uh, Shet Realm for a while. Yes, you may know her. Uh, we also have Zoe, who is also a new Patreon. Thank you very, very much. We have Jack, a new Patreon as well. And Todd, who is also a new Patreon. We have a bunch of new Patreons. You, you guys and gals are amazing. They are making this <laughs> possible. And hey, uh, I know we like to joke around about becoming a patron. One of our big pushes for this year is to add a third member permanently to this show because we got rid of the French oh, yes. connection, but we want to be bringing Jill on as a full-time member of our cast, not just for this, but for mm -hmm. some other things. And uh, our internet just got wicked expensive. So like, seriously, uh, maybe, maybe uh, be a patron. That'd be awesome. We love you. Thank you. Uh, slice by time. Let's, let's put it all in your face. All the math you forgot to remember from school or something like that, right? 3.1415 to something. Yeah, I honestly can't remember more than that. Uh, well, it is very much the slice of pie and ZDNet, you know, it's that loud website that likes to autoplay videos even though you don't that, That's why yeah. I changed the link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, they have a little bit of a story uh, which comes from um, Mozilla, of all places. Uh, so Mozilla has a new version of the Things Gateway. Uh, what does it do? Never heard of it. Honestly, I had never heard of it. Uh, it is basically your own router, a DNS um, gateway thing for all things internet of things did i say thing enough in that sentence nope i, I require so. you to say it going. twice two more times <laughs> all right okay so all these things that you have around your house they like to connect to said internet of things uh maybe you'd like to access them through your computer and instead of having to remember all the um the ip addresses uh all the network uh mac addresses everything else mm -hmm. Well, maybe you'd just like to attribute some URLs to it. You can. Uh, that's what um, the Web of Things standard tries to do. And the Things gateway very much makes it all that much easier. And it comes to you by Mozilla. So chances are, even if it's a bit choppy, you know it's going to work. Uh, and 
there is a little bit of a kivat. It will work on the Raspberry Pi, obviously. That's why it's in the slice of pie. But if you are using devices which use the ZigBee or the Z-Wave protocols, you still need to, uh, to buy those, it's like 40 bucks worth of adapters to get them to work and plug them into the uh, the USB ports on a Raspberry Pi. But they will work and you can use this to address those very same devices. So that's awesome. Good times. Yeah, I was like you. I didn't know this thing existed, but I'm glad it does. It makes me happy. Uh, like mm -hmm. our next topic here in Pi Land, uh, Odroid N1 board, rock chip, RK3399, four gigs of RAM, dual set, and man, I bet this thing's expensive, isn't it? Um, have it even yeah. looked? Well, it's 110 bucks. Uh, okay, that, that that's better than evil when you do handstands. Let, let's be honest about that. <laughs> Two USB 3.0 ports, HDMI 2.0, 4K display on the outputs, full system on a chip, 90 by 90 by 20. That's the millimeters. Oh, it's got a cute little heat sink mm -hmm. on it too. I wonder if you can water cool it. Um, yeah, I, I'm digging this 110 watt stinky caches. You could also throw Android on it. it does make it a little bit interesting. Mm -hmm. And I'm genuinely starting to have to pay attention to this because if you have access to our show notes, which is one of our patron perks, a uh, shameless plug, mm -hmm. thought you skipped over that, didn't you? We got you there. Um, we do get the bandwidth now. Uh, and so I'm going to be looking into making a little device for LGC 24 seven for our YouTube stream. That'll just run a playlist Ooh. of stuff, you know, but it'll have the live chat enabled a low powered box. So I think I'll probably use yeah. one of the Zabillion Raspberry Pi devices I have around the house instead of this, but <laughs> who knows? One of the things that really uh, piqued my interest with this one specifically was the Molex adapter. Mm. Yes, it's got a Molex connector on the board. It's like, you're looking at it, it's like, why do you need a Molex connector that, oh, right. Two set of devices that you can connect to it you can run them both off of that single Molex connector. So, yeah, that explains that. That's All one right. of the reasons <laughs> I've kept my uh, 3DFX Voodoo 5 5500 dual GPU card is because we're talking, like, back in the 90s, still required a Molex plug on the back to power it on top mm -hmm. of the HP. 12-volt <laughs> rail, man. Amen. It's there. <laughs> Things had to get done back then. Uh, beautiful people, that's going to do it for the show. But before we get out of here, we do like to talk you and we do hope that you like to uh you know give us a little feedback tell us what did right did wrong maybe you got some questions i don't know why you would ask us but hey we'll do our best to answer it and the easiest way to go about doing that linuxgamecast.com smash that contact button fam wow that felt dirty <laughs> um share with us your hints thoughts allegations and things better left unsaid just bring it uh, if you want to do the Linux Gamecast Weekly, we got a show going on about that. Jordan throws down the Canadian himself. We'll give you relationship advice free of charge. I wouldn't take it, but go ahead and do it. Game developers, just just get that together. Didn't have much this week, but then again, I was kind of busy. So this is something I do want to point out. If you're going mm -hmm. to send it, send it through Patreon. You're going to get it on the show, period. This, this is the best option because it goes out to all of us. Um... Last but not least, what I didn't have time to do is dig around in the YouTube comments section. So you're looking at like a 10% mm -hmm. chance coming through. But real quick before we get out of here, because this comes from RK. And RK, yes. I, I asked last week, man, because we were having genuine problems with the NVIDIA 390-25 drivers mm -hmm. and kernel 415 and Chrome just pooping itself. And I was like, but turned out, Firefox Quantum, uh, no pooping was to be had. It, it ran fine, ran swimmingly. No issues whatsoever. Now, uh -huh. unfortunately, I found other issues on top of that, which has caused me to revert back to 4.14 with the um, 3.80 stable issue. 3.87 point 380, something. Yeah. 3.87 or 3.80? Yeah, 3.89. So... But I did ask last week, what's a good way to mi migrate, because I have everything tied into Chrome, Chromium, and Chrome Beta, over to Firefox, and he sent me uh, to this site. He's like, hey, man, go check this out. And it's from How2Geek. Mm -hmm. Too easy. 
boringly easy. I, I was a yeah. little, I, I sit down and I was like, hmm, all right, well, I'm going to get 30 minutes of fun at it. Nope. Um, apparently nope. there's a thing in quantum. You just go to all bookmarks, import data. And it's like, Hey man, I see Chrome. Would you like me to import that? You hit boop. Uh, I booped all the things with the cookies, the browsing history, the same passwords, the passwords, bookmarks. That's uh, what, <laughs> yes, the passwords were exactly what kind of surprised me because mm -hmm. I know, uh, I knew that uh, Firefox could import cookies, history, and bookmarks from other browsers. Uh, anyone who's ever dual booted in their life, like I did back in the early 2Ks, it very much was kind of a lifesaver. It could even import from your local Windows install. Hmm. I did not know that it could pull the safe passwords. That right there is a big game changer. <laughs> that was pretty cool. I did it. I tried it. It worked. I've been doing my best to use Firefox. I'm still using it like right now. Um, Firefox is different. It does some things. No, it does one thing that was genuinely, I thought to be stupid. Okay. Now, I don't want to hate men from anyone because I go back and forth. I don't have, I, I don't latch on to anything. I latch on to what works currently at that time. Mm -hmm. um, no global Zoom, which we discovered. Yeah. That, that, that was dumb. <laughs> I forget it, who it was in our Discord chat that pointed me. It was like, oh, no, about config and adjust a CSS thing. It's like, okay, for me, and I'm sure for anyone listening to the show, it's like, oh, well, that's not too bad. Yeah, but try to tell anyone else like how to do a global Zoom. It's like, mm -hmm. but there's a plugin. And it's like, none of them work right for quantum. And in Chrome, this is just a setting thing. You go in and go global Zoom, boom, because UHD display. Another thing that, th this is just an irritating thing, Pedro, is a uh, perfect example. I go and check like DSL reports, the charter form, right? In the mornings, it's just part yeah. of, so in the super bar, the bookmarks bar on Chrome or on Firefox, I don't do a drop down or anything like that. I just type in DSL and that should take me, you know, it's going to pop up DSL reports. Now in Chrome, Chrome has figured out, you know, that it's not DSL reports, but I go to the certain page on DSL reports constantly mm -hmm. and it moves it up in the ranking to the top. Chrome's chewing on glue sticks on that one, buddy. It, I, I mean, I'm sorry, not Chrome, Firefox, but Firefox yeah. is. It, it refuses to do it, so I keep going, expecting it to be that top result, and it's always a second. <laughs> Admittedly, yeah, you could just change it to the bookmark being that actual page that you visit. Mm -hmm. That would actually push it up to the top because it, uh, yeah, that's one thing that Firefox does. It uh, all the bookmarks have priority when you start typing a, uh, a URL into the bar so yeah it's honestly i've been using quantum in the laptop for a good few months now and mm -hmm. well about a month and a half since it came out and it works it works really well hmm. i'm digging it it's yeah. fast i can rock on with it um gonna continue using it. it it's different it is so much better now that they've switched over to the, the whole quantum business uh Kudos to the team and Mozilla. Keep up mm -hmm. the good work. Um, hey, we survived this just barely. Uh, hopefully You're next have week. To catch fire. Hopefully <laughs> next week it'll be a little bit better. And yeah, n no major explosions. All things considered, lovely people. We will see you then. But until, let's roll the credits. Yes. Yeah. All y'all lovely people can have your name right here. If you help us make some really insane things. Help us finance this uh, horse and buggy show. Yeah. <laughs> yes, fires will tend to sprout around your house if you are watching either Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays or Linux Gamecast Weekly. I, uh, I'm biased, but I totally think it's worth it. Uh <laughs> oh, man. Mir's have Mir is talking like some deep knowledge here. Everyone, every everyone needs to stop and reflect on the wisdom, the sage <laughs> wisdom. Two years, two years, and it caught fire. Oh, it's caught fire before. Come on, we had a French person on every week for a while.